Hi friends, today we are reading Little Firefly, and this is an Algonquian legend, so another Native American people group, um, and this is the legend of the Little Firefly, and this one is written and adapted by the same woman, Terry Cohen, as our, Terry Cohen, as our um, story from yesterday, and it's illustrated by Charles Reisner as well. Okay, so this is Little Firefly. Among the birches surrounding a great woodland lake, there once lived an Algonquian girl named Little Firefly. She lived in a bark wigwam with her father and two older sisters. For days at a time, their father would hunt. You must teach Little Firefly the skills of a woman, he would say to the older girls each time he left them. But her sisters hated looking after Little Firefly and made her do most of the work. They often pushed her into the fire, leaving her skin puckered with scars, her hair singed and broken, her eyes red from smoke. Instead of using her name, everyone called her Little Burnt One. Kind. One day, Little Firefly was mashing berries when the two older girls came up to the wigwam arguing. You did not see him, said the eldest. You saw only his paddle and canoe, as I did. I guessed his bowstring was deer was deer sinew, and his hunting strap was beaver tail. Indeed, I did see him, claimed the second sister. His bowstring was twisted nettle, and his hunting strap was the neck skin of a snapping turtle. That old woman thought I was too beautiful, and might make her find a wigwam of her own. That is why she sent me away. Who sent you away? asked Little Firefly. The two older sisters glared at her, glanced at her, excuse me, the invisible one and his sister, who live across the lake, if it is any business of yours. Little Firefly knew the invisible one was a great hunter, whose gu guardian spirit had given him the gift of becoming invisible. He could only be seen by his sister, and one day, his bride. Did you truly see him? asked Little Firefly. Are you to become his wife? Her sister scowled. Why is our meal not ready, Little Burnt One? she demanded, and pushed Little Firefly into the hot coals. Laughing, the two older girls left to gossip with the other young women in the village. As usual, Little Firefly said nothing, but bathed her blistered feet and prepared a stew of moose meat and corn. Then she went to sit in a grove of silver birch. The sunlight warmed her face as she softly sang to the tree spirits, asking for strength and wisdom. Her clothing was worn and her feet were bare. If only my mother were alive, she thought, I would bathe in scented water. My dress would be of white rabbit skin, and I would wear soft moccasins decorated with quills and beads. I would, braid, I would braid wampum and flowers into my hair, and I would become the wife of a great hunter, perhaps even the invisible one himself. Suddenly, she realized how long she'd been day daydreaming and hurried back to the wigwam. The sisters had just finished eating the last of the stew. Where have you been? they asked. In the birch grove, talking to the tree spirits, answered Little Firefly, looking into the empty pot. Did you not leave any for me? Her elder sister snorted. Why should we, Little Burnt One? If it were not for you, we would already have husbands and wigwams, but Father will not talk of our marrying until you are old enough to be on your own. I am old enough to take care of myself. I will find a husband you will see. Then you will have to do some work yourselves. The sisters laughed. Who would want an ugly Little Burnt One like you? As they left, as they left, they called back. We will return after the dancing tonight. Try to stay out of the fire just this once. That night, as Little Firefly lay in her bed, she felt still felt the sting of her sister's laughter. When she slept, she dreamt of silver birches swaying in the wind and her mother's musical voice. Go, she whispered. Go to the wigwam of the Invisible One. You will find much happiness. In the morning, Little Firefly remembered her mother's words. How would I find happiness there, she wondered. I am far too ugly to be the bride of the Invisible One. Besides, none of the maidens from the village have been able to see him. How could I? Perhaps they need a servant. Surely that would be no worse than my life here. As she picked cranberries, Little Firefly thought of the tall, handsome hunter. As she wove fishnets, she thought of his wigwam across the lake. As she gathered fresh pine boughs for the floor, <clears throat> She thought of a life away from her sisters. I will visit the invisible one, she decided, but first I must have a better dress. Little Firefly once again visited the birch grove and asked the tree spirits for bark. She stripped a large piece and cut its size, then sewed a flower design with small bits of moose hair she had saved. She made moccasins from corn husks and decorated her short hair with silver birch leaves. Around her neck, she wore a necklace of shells and feathers. To her waist, she tied a pouch filled with maple candy, a gift for the invisible one. At last, she was ready. She stepped into her own small canoe and pushed it onto the lake. As she looked over her sh shoulder, she saw her sisters on the shore, pointing and laughing at her. Look, called the older girl. Our foolish sister seeks the invisible one. 
Little Firefly turned around and silently dropped her paddle in the, into the water. Ahead, she saw only the lake in the forest edge. How will I know where to find him, she wondered. The sun was settling lower and lower, painting the sky the color of choke cherries. Suddenly, she saw a curl of smoke and pointed her canoe towards it. Soon arriving on the beach, she was greeted by a smiling young maiden. Welcome. Have you come to visit my brother, she asked. Surely this cannot be the old woman my sister spoke of, thought little Firefly. I have come, she answered, because my mother spoke to me in a dream. She said I would find much happiness here. The maiden held out her hand. Follow me. My brother returns from his hunt soon. I hear his paddle on the lake. Let us find out if you can truly see him. Little Firefly's heart fluttered. Oh, but I did not come to seek a husband, she said. I thought you might need help, someone to cook for you, perhaps, or tan your animal skins. The maiden smiled. All the same, you must meet my brother. They took the path through the woods until they came to a place overlooking the lake shore. Little Firefly heard water splashing against the side of a canoe. As the boat rounded into view, she gasped. Well, do you see him? asked the man. I do, breathed little Firefly. He is indeed handsome. The maiden nodded. Others before you have said so, but they did not truly see him. What is his bowstring, what is his bowstring made of? Oh, it is the rainbow. The maiden raised her eyebrows. And his hunting strap? Little Firefly caught her breath. It is the Star Bridge of Souls. The maiden smiled and took Little Firefly's hands. You have truly seen my brother, she said. Come, we must prepare for your meeting while he tends to his catch. Little Firefly covered her face with her hands. How could I have been chosen? What will he think of my scars? When they reached the wigwam, the maiden prepared a, pre a pine-scented bath for Little Firefly. As the soothing water trickled over her, her scars disappeared. The maiden combed sacred bear grease into Little Firefly's hair, and with each stroke it grew longer and black as the raven's wing. The maiden braided warm, warm wampum and flowers and birch leaves into Little Firefly's hair. Then she gave her a beautiful dress of white rabbit skin and moccasins decorated with quills, shells, and beads. Little Firefly was marveling at all that had happened, but she heard a lilting melody come closer and closer to the lodge. Suddenly the door flap was pushed aside. She gasped. There stood the Invisible One, tall and handsome. He lowered the love flute from his lips and smiled, holding out his hand. So you have come at last, he said. What do they call you? Knowing she would never again be called Little Burnt One, she shyly, she shyly placed her hand in his. I am named for the one who carries sparks from the sun, she replied proudly. I am Little Firefly. Yeah. So that was the, the legend of Little Firefly, and it's kind of similar to a story we know as well. You might have recognized it, someone who is called by another name, has two not-so-nice sisters, and ends up with a handsome man at the end. Maybe you can think about what story that is. All right, have a great rest of your day, friends.